How's it going, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Um, we are coming to you live from Prescott, Arizona. Very, very good. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you guys are seeing me okay. I'm, I'm rocking some uh, fairly low-powered, <laughs> fairly low-powered capability. So if you're seeing me, oh boy, hang on tight. Uh, you may want to find me on Twitch, Angry Shoverbot on Twitch. One of the admins will possibly post a link for that. Uh, so you can catch me if the YouTube side goes belly up because it doesn't like uh, the streaming here. So we really, really hope this works out. <laughs> it looks like it's working, though. It says, excellent condition on the YouTube side, so they seem to be semi-happy. Greetings from Nagoya, Japan. Right on. We got some people that nailed their, uh, got their general license right, right slanted. Right on. Very good. Uh, somebody called me the Baofang Daddy, which always cracks me up. What's going on, everybody? James Hannibal, thanks for the retweet, James. Uh, hello from Minnesota, KE0WQB, right on. What's up? Uh, I am, like I said, I'm in Prescott, Arizona. I came out here to do a collab with Survival, I'm sorry, um, Fieldcraft Survival, and it's a really cool group of guys. They're Special for retired special forces, at least some of them are, uh, mainly in the area of, let me go ahead and mute that, mainly in the area of uh, firearms and preparedness in that sense, but they wanted to open things up a bit to comms platforms and what's available to people out in the regular world outside of the military, and uh, that's how they had me come in. So very, very fun. I am tired. I'm going to sleep like a baby today. How's it going? Oh man, so many people right on. Thanks for coming in. Kissimmee, Florida. Very, very good. All right, let's flip her over. How's it going, everybody? Uh, I am Josh, K-I-6-N-A-Z. Thanks for hopping on over to the Ham Radio Crash Course. We are trying to push for inclusivity in amateur radio. So what we try to do is make it a space where people can ask their questions because it can be really complicated. And I had a really lot of fun today talking to the guys at Fieldcraft and kind of going through things from a beginner aspect. So if you're interested, the links are in the description to check them out. They have a really cool podcast. The podcast that we did today, along with the videos, the podcast alone was two hours long just talking about what you might want to do in a survival situation, things you can have on hand uh, from a calm standpoint to be a little bit more prepared. So very, very good. <laughs> Peter says, thank you, thank you broke the Long Island CW Club. They gained a bunch of new members. I heard about that. I'm very happy about that. Uh, Yup Nope asks, what is the brew of the day? I'll get to that in a second. Uh, just miles in the desert off. Oh, wow. Uh, old tech guy is, I didn't realize he was close to Prescott. Very cool. Michael Hol, uh, Holworth, his first stream. Thank you for watching. Keep in mind, this one is a little bit different. I am on the road, so it's I don't have the standard rig. My stream rig is is pretty pretty good um, from, from that standpoint of what I do on the live stream. So a um, little bit different today, but hopefully you guys stick with me. There's not going to be as much radio. Oh, he's in Kingman. Okay, yeah, he's not that far from here. Um, on the way back to the hotel, I stopped at the Lonesome Valley Brewing uh, Company, which they advertise themselves as the oldest brewing. Um, how is that possible? It's established 2013. Well, anyway, they have an American Porter that I picked up. Fieldcraft, yeah, Fieldcraft survival ah, they have the uh, rule the growler rule where they've got to wrap it with plastic i think that's what that's what's about because you can't have that's the seal that's what keeps you from just opening it and drinking it as you go down the road um, th i am going to drink this right out of the bottle though because i don't want to get a glass i think it's going to be classier uh, to drink it right out of this than oh it's right on the top you can you can just the beer is right on the top. This is every ounce of what I paid for it. Ah, porter. That's good. Whew. All right. Okay, so going back to what I was saying, 
We push for inclusivity. Why is my logos not going? The logos not going? What's going on here with the logos? Why are the logos not going? I don't understand. <laughs> that's what happens when you do. Uh, we'll just throw that guy up there. Here, that's big enough for you. Hope you, hope you know where you are now. Good morning from the land of the morning calm, South Korea. Right on. Uh, Mike, the owner of Fieldcraft, is um, I think half Korean, whole Korean. Anyway, uh, so that's pretty cool. Let's see, multitasking, contesting, and watching at the same time. Juan Lopez. So yeah, everybody watching, there is a DX single sideband contest going on. And great transition, I want to show you, I woke up this morning and I was like, hey, what's, what's a going on on the bands? So I pulled up my KX2, I put up my AX1, the Elecraft vertical antenna that I had previously reviewed. Now I'll be I'll be completely open in in my comments on this. I didn't review it the highest. I didn't give it the highest rating. Um, but what the heck? It's an extremely portable antenna. So I always pack it with my KX2. It just lives with it. And it's from that standpoint, it's extremely awesome in that it's just right there and you can use it at any time. Well, I put it on the air, got the KX2 up and running, and I started tooling around 40 meters. And uh, this station came in, JA3YBK. I heard him. I uh, heard him at a 5.9. Uh, I'm in my hotel room. I have a southern exposed window. And I said, what the heck, I'll call him back. They heard me. They got me uh, in their logs for the DX single sideband contest. It's my only contact, uh, the whole contest, because I've just been busy uh, doing the whole thing with Fieldcraft. But yeah, I got a Japanese single sideband contact, 10 watts with the Elecraft AX1. Holy smokes. And in fact, I'll show you kind of what it looks like. Um, there's my KX2, but if you look in the window right there, there's the AX1 just sitting in the window like that next to that can of red wine. <laughs> um, man. Uh, absolutely ecstatic about pulling that one up. It's just so awesome. Uh, <laughs> very excited. That is super cool when you can when you can do something like that. Please use key frequency of four seconds or less. Currently, you're not being sent often enough. Oh, if you get some buffering, I apologize. Apparently, it's not happy with um, with what's going on there. So, anyway, I'm enjoying the porter. Like I said, I am on a, a bit of a travel day, so I don't have my standard stream. I apologize. But what are we talking about today? Well, going back to how we started the whole thing, this is the amateur, uh, the ham radio crash course, and we push for inclusivity, meaning there's no dumb questions. These are hard topics. Comms are difficult. I came out here to talk to Fieldcraft to kind of do this whole thing, break down comms, make it a little bit more approachable. So this is what this is all about. This is why we have the YouTube channel. This is why we have our Facebook group. It's why we have our Discord. And our Discord is where we host the after chat of this stream. So if you're interested in like continuing the conversation in amateur radio, consider joining us on the Discord. The link is in the description for the Discord. It is a wonderfully fun time. It's a live chat, like text chat, and then there's also a voice chat component. If you want to do that, I'm a big fan, um, so that's that's why we use it. But uh, it's super, super awesome. Uh, Philip Muth said, spent my day helping 40 scouts earn their communications merit badge. Hey, bravo, man. That is awesome. That is super cool. Congratulations on that. Uh, very, very good. So, yeah, if anybody is interested in making DX contacts, now is the time because of the DX contest that's going on. So make sure you do uh, do that whole thing. And while I got you here, if you're if you're watching this and you're having a good time, at least at the beginning of this as we kick it off, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing if you have not already done that for the show. I would appreciate it. It helps YouTube kind of get the idea through their algorithm that you like this kind of content, you want to see more amateur radio videos. So hit that thumbs up. Jake has a question. Got an inline meter. It's hooked up. Radio tuner meter, but the SWR the SWRs don't agree at all. Yes, that is correct, because um, the meter 
is post tuner. So it's tuner, meter, antenna. The antenna is still going to have a bad SWR. The only difference that the tuner is doing is the output of the tuner or the input into the radio. It's adjusting the uh, impedance match to feed the radio with 50 ohms. It doesn't change the impedance of the antenna on the other side of the tuner. It just makes it so the antenna pushes all that power out through the tuner, aside from any losses that you pick up with your coax. So if you put the meter between the antenna and the tuner, you will show the true SWR of what you're putting out. That's the idea anyway. By the way, we're going to do a bunch of Q&A, um, so don't worry about that. I do have some news to go through and some things to talk, talk about. But, uh, oh, hey, thank you, Andrew uh, Slythe. I apologize. I don't have my normal animations for the um, Super Chats, but I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the Super Chat. Let me get the chat room back up here. Very good. Thank you so much for that. All right. All right, so... Um, I've got a couple of things. I'll post the links in the description for this. In fact, I, I will do that. I'll try and do that right now. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. The um, Yoda, Young, Youngsters on the Air, has a GoFundMe campaign going on. I kicked into that uh, over the weekend, and I will post the link in the description right now so it doesn't get lost. I don't want to forget. What was that about? Sorry, I want to make sure I don't don't forget this. Youngsters on the air is important, and they deserve a bit of support if you're interested in helping out in that. Okay, so the Yoda GoFundMe has been activated and added to the description, so thanks for that. Um, okay, so Youngsters on the Air is doing a GoFundMe, and the link is now in the description, and if you're watching this after I was live, you can check it over there. I kicked in to support them a bit, and I think it's a good cause, particularly for youth, getting them interested in amateur radio. It is a no-brainer, so hopefully that is uh, something you'll check out. Also, we're gonna do hotels on the air for Hamvention this year. We attempted it last year and, and largely we didn't kind of roll out soon enough with the information, but we've got that sorted out now. The link is in the description. So, uh, hey, Ham Radio Dude, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it, thank you very much. So make sure you go check that out if you're interested. It is, what is the URL is in the description. It is hotelsontheair.com. That's pretty easy as far as that's concerned. You can, uh, you can follow that pretty quickly. <laughs> so check that out. Hmm. Okay, so, oh, another one from Andrew. <laughs> Thank you, dude, I appreciate it. Um, so the event that I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna mention, and I'll actually pull up the website for it right now. We are going to have another meetup in Dayton, but this time we're going to the Troll Pub, which I thought was hilarious. Um, the Troll Pub, <laughs> aptly named Troll Pub. Uh, there's two locations. We're going to be meeting at the Wheelhouse in Dayton, Ohio. This is it right there. And this is what it looks like. So <laughs> I'm pretty excited about this. So we're going to be meeting on Saturday for dinner. I'll narrow down the time a little bit more accurately, but assume 6, 7 o'clock, something around there. Uh, the last time we did the meet at the brewery, we were there for a very, very, very long time. And it's open to everybody. It's open to all the YouTubers and anybody that wants to come along. We don't discriminate on anybody. Everybody's welcome. So Saturday... Uh, 6 p.m., 7 o'clock, call it maybe a little bit earlier. If you get there earlier, that's no big deal. We do have a room in the back. So for everybody who attended the meetup last year, it got really, really loud. So um, this should help things out considerably because the last one was just in a big open brewery. It was just extremely, extremely loud. So with this going to somewhere that has a back room, we'll be able to sit, chat, have a bit of food, um, and it should not be that difficult. We could probably even live stream, which is going to be great for, for the YouTubers. Ah, all right. So hopefully that is something you'll put on your calendars. For Friday, 
Um, I'm going to go to the Crown Plaza. The Crown Plaza has a bunch of events that they uh, hold every year. There's multiple, like the there's the DX uh, dinner is at the Crown Plaza. I'm sure if there's someone like Sterling in the chat or Kyle or any of the people that normally go to, um, are we looking at the art? Oh, um, if, if you go to any of those, the stuff that they have at the Crown Plaza, there's a ton of events. There's a bar of some kind. I believe in some instances it might be open. Um, I don't know. And uh, there's a ton of stuff to do. So I would like it if you could. Come on out. We'll meet there and we'll just we'll walk around together and we'll go check out everything there is to check out. And if we find a spot to just chill at, we'll chill there. So that should be a lot of fun too. I think that would be really cool to kind of come out in mass. Anybody that came on the DX, I'm not DX, the Soda Camp, wear your shirts if you can. The QRP shirts that we handed out, I would like it if you did that. I will also be bringing a couple more of those shirts. I think it'll be really fun because it's going to be the 705 rollout. So every, not this week, but next week, I'm going to start giving away more of those shirts so that we get most of them rolled out to people. And that will be really cool um, that we can get enough people wearing them. 705 is going to be out likely by Hamvention, so that should be a lot of fun. Mm. Somebody said, go buy a burrito. Uh, IK04, super chat, go get a burrito. I like that idea. I would love a burrito. I'm not driving anywhere, though. So I'm in the hotel. There's no restaurant here, so I'm likely going to have something delivered. It would probably end up being pizza because I don't know what they do delivery out here, but I'll figure something out. Likely during the after chat. <laughs> Uh, am I missing super chats? I saw a bunch of dollar suit. Oh my god! <laughs> Ham radio dude, a uh, thank you. Andrew S slide, thank you. L uh, Laird, Nigel, thank you. Oh my gosh, I missed it. Sorry, Brian. Uh, Pif Fenning, Brian Fennig. I hope I got that right. Thank you, man. Good lord, you guys went nuts. Thank you. Oh my God. Donate. <laughs> Break your bow fang. Thank you. Trevor Ward, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, that's that's amazing and crazy. Thank you. Uh, okay. See if they can deliver some beer, too. I don't know. I think after 32 ounces, I'm probably going to be done. And there's that can of wine that I picked up. Um, whatever. How come no CW on the summit on the air event? Any, anybody could do CW. I wasn't stopping any from doing CW. If they want to do CW, they can do it. It just so happens that uh, nobody that came out on the event is uh, doing CW, perhaps Sterling, but I think he mainly works single sideband. Sterling's probably the most proficient out of all of us, with maybe me second. And if you know how good I am, that's not that great, but I don't want to speak for a lot of other people. All right, what else do we got? Uh, real quick, here's the hotels on the air website. So hotels on the air, really quick, there's a rules area that covers what it is. And basically, it's a voice uh, contest, so single sideband. And you can't use repeaters. You can definitely use satellites. You can definitely, you should be in a hotel. You should be in an RV, which is about the reason why we're doing it, because we're going to be at Hamvention all together. And um, there, there's a grid square reporting, which is kind of funny, because we might all be in the same grid. <laughs> but hey. Hey, Sterling's in the house. Thank you very much, Sterling, for hopping on. Um, Sterling, why don't you post in the chat some of the stuff that goes on in the Crown Plaza if people are on the fence about whether they want to go or not. They can think about doing that. Because I think that'll be fun. Um, somebody asked in the chat, are we going to cover the link they sent me? Yes, that is going to be the next thing we cover. So digital text modes are allowed except DMR text messaging and AX25, unless it's through an, uh, the ISS Digipeter. Hotspots and VoIP systems are not permitted. Stations may be worked once per band. Bands include, uh, the contest are 2200 meters through 2300, uh, 23 centimeters. Remote stations not allowed. Satellite contests may be made once per hour, subject to revision. So very good, and, and assuming you have a pass, right? And the official exchange is, the official exchange is your name, hotel name, grid square, and signal report. So this should be fun. And there's a way to submit logs. You've got it right here. 
I'm going a little slow because I'm, I'm running very, very low Wi-Fi power. Tatam Noshnov Nosh Haj, thank you for the super chat. Hector Marchand, thank you for the super chat. Andrew Slight, I mean, you're in. Oh, hey, there's Dennis. <laughs> Dennis, I always know Dennis. 762. What's up, man? Appreciate it. Tam Nosh Haj, thank you. <laughs> Can you send that link? Uh oh. Am I crashing or is uh hopefully I'm not crashing. Nope, I'm not crashing. So we're still good. <laughs> so it's okay. Hotels on the air website. Don't worry about submitting your logs because it's not time to do it yet anyway. Alright. Before we get into the um the talk that we're gonna we're gonna talk about this article that was linked to me. I want to talk about um, soda, particularly what I'm gonna be doing with my tomorrow before I hop on a plane. I am in Prescott, as I mentioned, and we are looking at the soda map webpage. And this is accessible through phone apps like Soda Goat, which is what I use on iOS, and. Oh, it's Matt Johnson Johnson backwards. Okay, there you go. Appreciate that. So I am surrounded, absolutely surrounded by eight to 10 point summits here in Prescott. Anybody who is looking for a radio destination, Prescott, Arizona, if you wanna do soda, is a spot to go to. It is intense. So tomorrow I'm likely gonna be doing this Glassford Hill. I think it's a drive up. I'll be doing whichever one is a drive up, but. Um, this is an eight point summit loading, loading. It is 35 activations so far, and it looks like they were all last year, none for this year, so I'm gonna make sure I get on that thing. Yeah, uh, only tourists pronounce it. Yeah, I, I'm sure. Uh, what's, pre uh, not Prescott, it's Press. I used to know how to say it per, uh, properly, but I think I'm just too tired. Prescott, Prescott, that's it, Prescott. Prescott, Arizona. I don't want to be a tourist, although I'm, I'm here doing some hard work drinking this 32 ounce beer. <laughs> okay, so I'll be hitting that up, but let me go back here and show you what this place looks like. So, oop, wrong way, enhance. So here's Prescott Valley, and here's an eight pointer. Here's an eight pointer. What is this eight pointer? Oh well. Uh, let's see. Here's a six pointer, another six pointer, another eight pointer, and here's a 10 pointer. It's crazy. <laughs> hey, Yava, is it Yavapai? Yavapai. Another eight pointer, another eight pointer, another 10 pointer. So many. And by the way, the Prescott uh, Air Regional Airport, there's a, actually not Prescott, the other airport. That place is small. Another 10 pointer, another eight pointer, eight pointer, eight pointer, eight pointer, eight or six pointer. Crazy amount of soda uh, spots out here. So seriously, if you're interested in doing soda, holy smokes. Holy smokes. You can't, somebody says they can't find the SDR dongle in the Amazon store. Uh, okay, let's see. So if you go to ham radio gear, uh, radio gear? What happened here? Radio gear. Uh, you're right. <laughs> what the heck? Well, shoot. If you go to my if you go to my A store and you search for uh, the new Alec uh, SDR or RTL SDR, you can just access it that way. And uh, that is a mistake on my part. It got dropped off here. That's not good. Well, shoot. Sorry about that. I'll get that sorted out. 
because uh, yeah, that's hey, that's all my stuff. Uh, let's let's go back to the chat room. <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys are making it rain with super chats. M Radio dude, Andrew uh, Sly, thank you very much. And John uh, Johnson, Matt Johnson, backwards. Thank you very much. I just used the RTL SDR to build a uh, yes APRS iGate with a Raspberry Pi. That is next on my list. I'm probably going to do that. That's a fun little little um, thing you can you can build. Uh, if you haven't already, go check out my NOAA satellite receiving antenna and SDR setup. That was really fun to make that, and it's very cheap to build one of those. You just use one of those RTL SDR dongles, or my preferred, the Nualec. If you happen to have an SDR play, that works really well for me. And those are super fun. I, I, I really like doing NOAA capture or NOAA, NOAA captures. I promise it's not the beer getting to me. I'm really tired. Uh, Laird says, I did I did soda in Lake District, my county of Cumbria, Northwest England. Very cool. Ah, the Northwest Woodsman. I understand now. That is dumb that I don't have it linked. What's the difference between SDRs? Uh, the RTL SDR and the, and the new ELEC are pretty similar. Um, both of those SDRs, though, work on more of the higher frequency spaces. Your VHF, UHFs, they're going to be better in that spaces. They're not really as great on HF. You need something like a down converter or an up converter to get down to them, to those frequencies. Um, but they can work okay if you run them in direct processing. Uh, dynamic or direct sampling? Direct sampling mode. 123 by I. K04, thank you. Okay, so um, this is a link that came in today and it was on Discord. Let me go back here. Uh, where did that come from? Who posted that? Where did you send it to me? Oh my gosh, I thought it was a, a Discord private message. I don't think it was. Oh, I apologize. Um, if you're in the live stream, mention that you linked it to me. I'm sorry about that. But it was uh, sent to me. I barely got a chance to look at it. I thought we'd look at it online right now or while we're live. So this is an interesting concept just from the title alone. Help wanted to... Uh, there it is. That's what it was. Uh, GBB messaged me on Twitch. Thank you. I pre-streamed to check and see if I'd actually be able to do the live stream tonight from my hotel room. We are barely barely at five megabits on uh, upload speed. So I'm shocked that this is actually working still. Um, I'm glad it is, but oh my gosh, this is kind of nuts. And the, uh, let's see. Okay, so are you a young, we're gonna start this down here. We're gonna read this, we're gonna do this live. How long does this go? Maybe not, maybe I won't read it live. <laughs> Are you a young ham want to help remake amateur radio for the 21st century, frustrated that there are also so few of your friends and age group that are interested in ham radio, frustrated that amateur radio is in a rut, not doing more or different things with technology, concerned that an aging demographic means ham radio is dying and that our frequencies will be sold out to the highest bidder because they aren't enough hams to show that we use them. So are we. So am I. I've been talking about this for a long time. And we want to do more than talk. We want to do something about it. IARU Region 2 is looking for a few volunteers to work together to brainstorm ideas and possible actions uh, to increase ham radio's attractiveness. We are not looking for a single magic approach. That's probably very smart. After all, amateur radio means many things to many people because it is a very broad and diverse uh, hobby uh, with just the technical, technical aspect alone. Rather, we're looking for possible ways to target specific interests that are either part of Ham Radio today or could be a part of Ham Radio in the future to recruit and retain new amateurs. Ham Radio Dude, I got my allowance today. Make it rain. Make it rain. Thank you very much. Appreciate the support. Are you interested? Are you? A radio amateur who has been... Oh, <laughs> that's not a double question. Are you interested? And then, are you... 
a radio amateur who's been licensed for more than a year between 18 and 35 years of age. Oh, I've aged out. Are a self-starter willing to take initiative, willing to volunteer your time and exercise creativ uh, creativity? All right. If so, send an email to secretary at IARU region 2 or dash R2. Tell us why you are interested in volunteering to be part of the group. Your current interest in ham radio, what you do, job student, and your thoughts on what may be done. Ideally, we would like to have as many parts of the Americas represented as possible, with the exception of a liaison person sitting in. The formalities of committees won't apply. The group will figure out how to work. Oh, here we go. Interesting. The committees, okay, the group will figure out how it wants to work. Facebook, WhatsApp, video meetings, and develop ideas of what it thinks will be worth trying out. This is more than a think tank. We're prepared, ooh, they've got some funding to try out some of the proposed ideas and see how well they work. We expect that some ideas will work, others won't, and different things will work in different parts of the Americas. One size does not fit all. As part of the work, IARU Region 2 would propose to send one person to the Region 1 Yoda camp to experience the camp, meet with the R1 youth coordinators to learn about what they are doing in Europe and Africa, and exchange ideas and explore what joint activities might be done. Okay. So there you go. Um, I got the word out now. If you're interested in that, if you're between the ages of 18 and 35, you can message secretary at IARU region 2.org and, um, and talk to them. I think that's a good idea. I think that's uh, something we should all be doing more of. All right. So, um, and the tram is putting. Um, so yeah, Yoda. Yoda's obviously happening. You've got people like Neil Rapp. You've got people like Sterling in the chat. Sterling in the chat that are working to to make a bit more Yoda friendly environment in the Americas. As mentioned, as the Region Two blog post here mentioned, the Yoda situation in Europe and the kind of delegates, if you will, the people that come in from South America, pretty active. They have a pretty awesome. Yoda situation that uh, Sterling can talk about at detail because he's been before and he has talked about that he's talked about it in the after chat he may join us um, in the after chat again today so if you're interested reminder we're going to discord after this so if you want to follow the link that I have in the description we can do that or you can do that ham radio dude my mom is going to front me another week allowance ham radio dude is out of control uh ham radio dude by the way go check him out on uh on obviously youtube uh he's got a lot of like he i don't he doesn't have a ton of videos but the videos he's putting out is a nice format he's got a good layout for the way he does his videos so it's pretty go check him out just do it do it for me <laughs> Uh, Lee Fan Death says, those of us who are over 35 tend to have a longer knowledge of history and first-person experience with what has already been done in the past, including why it worked or failed. Yeah, maybe. I found that the people that um, are older take things that they learned when they're younger and then repackage them with a new name and push it out as though it's new, but it's not new. It's old. I see that a lot in engineering. Zachary Ribera says, yeah, why limited to 35? Well, because it's they're aiming for youth. They're aiming for um, newer newer people coming into the hobby and what they may find interesting and what they if they speak to newer people and what might interest them to become interested in amateur radio, I'm guessing. I don't fault them at all for trying this. I, I think that it's good. Uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, I'm I'm uh, 37, and a lot of what I did with the ham radio crash course is to just capitalize on social media aspects that weren't being represented in the way that I thought they should. There are a ton of Facebook groups on um, on ham radio, but if you go to those, you get a very specific experience and. They're kind of similar. You go to the Ham Radio Crash Course Facebook group, it's not like that. We actively admin it and police it to make sure it's not like the other Facebook groups. 
if you want that kind of experience, go ahead. I don't want that. I don't want that as the future of ham radio, that, that type of negativity that comes out on those pages. So we don't allow it. Um, Discord. Discord wasn't me. It was from people like Dominic, who's one of the admins, and it was from people like Loyal and, and the host of admins we have now. But, you know, Dominic and Loyal kind of got the ball rolling in creating what we have now, and they have done an amazing job and continue to do an amazing job. Everybody does. All the admins do. I appreciate everything they do um, all the time. Um, it means a lot. But they're the people um, and all of you who come to these, you know, our little community and keep it going the way it is and keep it more vibrant, I guess, for a younger community of hands, which is kind of the, the point. That's what we're aiming for. So kudos on everybody involved in it. Watching this is a part of that too. Just being on YouTube's already uh, tilts younger on the uh, amateur radio side than than a lot of other things. So, um, Sterling with a good comment. I don't know why older folks think they're being excluded here. In my opinion, you're not. It's going to take a young peer group to keep ham radio relevant in the next generations. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, I hate to say it, but I'll 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 take a little blunt tact. Eventually the younger people will be the older people and, and they're trying to create the world, the ham radio world that will be the ham radio world of the future. So I don't fault that at all. I don't think that, I don't think that that's a bad thing. I think you got to, right? To a certain degree, you've got to kind of move forward a bit. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is that was kind of what I wanted to talk about. We talked about Hamvention, what we're doing with that. We're going to meet at the Troll Pub. That's a tentative location right now. Looks like a lot of fun. The fact that it's called the Troll Pub and we're all a bunch of YouTubers that are going to go, very nice. Um, so look forward to that. Call it 6 p.m., 7 p.m. on Saturday for Hamvention. On Friday, when you get a chance, roll on over to the Crown Plaza and I'll post something on Twitter or I'll post something on my Instagram story. By the way, if you haven't already been following me on Instagram, please do. I'm Hoshnasi over there, the same Hoshnasi as on YouTube. That would be great if you could do that. I'm trying to get to the point where I can link um, to my IG videos, to my IG stories, and it's kind of like YouTube of the past. You have to like get more followers before you can get more functionality out of the tool, which is kind of a pain in the butt. It's like every time you go to a new platform, you've got to like get to a certain level before you can use it in full feature. Kind of stinks, but whatever. Um, ham Radio Dude, really, younger people are more influenced by people slightly older than them, not their elders. So, uh, yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. JT6188 says, is the wind blowing there? Dude, the wind is nuts out here. Pre Prescott, Prescott, not Prescott, Prescott, uh, is at a higher elevation, and man, it is windy. It is really windy out here. Hey, Ham Radio Dude. <laughs> Thanks again, man. My Elmer is 20 years younger than me. <laughs> hey, it, and that's cool, man. That's super cool. Why not? I'm, I'm assuming, you know, as, as old as I am, I'm 37, I'm assuming there's people that stumble on my videos that are in their 50s, maybe older, and, and they're, like, getting started. I've gotten tons of messages like that. Cool. It doesn't matter, you know. You've probably got lots of more life experience and plenty of other things than I do, but in this one little area... I may have a little bit more experience. No big deal. Uh, we're halfway through. <laughs> it's um. So I'll I'll take a detour on the the Lonesome Valley Brewing American uh, Porter. It's mildly sweet, not too strong. A little on the uh, medium mouthfeel for a porter. It's not too heavy at all. So yeah, okay. So that was that. Uh, I'm going to open this up to questions now. The Q&A portion is just wide open. I don't have the Skype turned on, so I can't take calls because I think if I turned on Skype, it would destroy the stream. It, there's no way I can handle it. So what I'm going to do is we're going to flip it on over to my uh, KX2 here. and We're going to... Can you even see that? There we go. Whoa, look at that. All right, we gotta get off of this. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Holy shnikes. 
Where is it? Good lord. Uh, let's tune her up. Okay, we're getting major... Wow, we are getting... Yeah, seriously. Rip internal speaker. Chris Dameron says, I found your YSF room. Right on. Um, I don't know that this is going to be workable. There's way more noise than we had. Uh, is it getting dark? Yeah, it's getting dark. 20 meters is going to be bad. We're over an S9 noise floor. hi yi yi Sounds like my noise floor before I put fair lights on everything. <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Um... Is that somebody calling CW? No, that's a halogen bulb. No, um, hmm. Hold on, let me move. Let me move the antenna. <laughs> Whoa! No, I can't do that. I think it might be my, yeah, I think it might be my charger. I got to leave that connected, though, because that's kind of what's keeping this whole thing going. <laughs> so we might not be able to work any radio. Um, so when I woke up this morning, the the noise was not this high. Come on, where is the power? There we go. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Bank of America has stopped all raining of, of ones. <laughs> uh, let's see. David says, I stumbled onto Josh's site and agree it is the middle age who can Elmer the youth and get them in. Yeah, you know, that's an interesting thought. Um, I don't know that the older folks can't. I just, maybe there's a communication barrier there that they're, they're just not working together. Don't know. Um... SD, oh, 3D Geo Don 999 says, Are you going to do an extra crash course? Um, maybe. Uh, maybe, I don't know. If any is waiting for a room at the Crown Plaza, just wait for coronavirus to slam us in a few weeks. Uh, yeah, that's not, that's not, you might not be wrong. <laughs> ham radio dude thank you buddy found a ham radio club where i live going to stop by and figure out how to get started um good idea go in there with an open mind but you know if it doesn't work out for you that's okay just consider um trying another club you know or waiting a little bit and going back sometimes it's a bad day but keep an open mind okay this is too much All right, nah, that's not going to work. We're going to stop that for right now. We'll come back in a little bit. It worked really, really good this morning. It was really quiet, but 
Yeah. So the problem with FT8 is um, I have to, let me think this out in my head. The Raspberry Pi opens up its own Wi-Fi um, and there is no, um, I don't have it configured to be a user of Wi-Fi instead of the host of the Wi-Fi. The only way that you can get it to take in a network connection is if you connect it to an ethernet jack. And that's just the way the Raspberry Pi works as it's configured right now. I could change it, but I'm not gonna do this live. There's no way I can get that done. Um, I guess I could do FT8 though with, no, but the noise floor is so high. Meh, meh, meh. Oh, you know what? Mm. I can't do FTA right now. Soderlun, things like your channel are the only reason I have an Elmer. Have learned a lot from your channel and others. Think so uh, think social media will help get more people involved in him. It's possible. Yeah, I mean, I, I think so. Not like people, <laughs> Sterling, not like people are getting sick from it, but just pulling out preemptively. Hopefully they don't nix Hamvention, but you never know. The elderly are the primary. Oh, that's true. Yeah, you're right, Sterling. Um, I have so much RFI in my shed, but I can't get rid of it because it's all from my home network. Try some ferrites or some toroids on it. Michael Bradley, honest question, not trying to be disrespectful. Do clubs have ongoing projects and, uh, and moving forward or just rehashing the same stuff and CQ games? It depends. Um, there are some that are just like that and there are some that have things that they do, events that they do. Not all of them though. So, you know, it, it will vary depending on, on what you're dealing with, with your club in your area. You know what, now I think we can make, now the more that I think about it, I think we can make FT8 work. I don't think it's going to work well, but we can make it work. Things I need to make this work. That. Okay. Check. I need, here's my audio dongle. That goes into my hub. I linked an older new ham to Discord when he asked for help. He says he doesn't want to download because a virus made him throw his computer in the garbage. Okay. And you know, that's that's what it is. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fault anybody for not wanting to deal with it. I I'm gonna understand. If people don't want to get on Discord, they don't want to get on Discord. That's okay. But I guess that speaks to I guess that speaks to what Serling said and what others said earlier is that Perhaps the middle-aged are, are better at reaching out to the youth, maybe. But, you know, the thing that has been said many times, and not by me, is that this is the same um, thing that the, the now elders of today were worried about when they were middle-aged of yesteryear, that ham radio is going to die, and it's we can't save it, and it's going away, and et cetera, et cetera. All, all of that is, has been said. Oh, 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 crap. Mm. Do I have enough? I guess I do. Let's see if this will work. Oh! That was a good noise. All right. <laughs> I'm doing this live. I didn't really want to have to do this. Uh, okay, hold on. Appreciate you sticking with me. <laughs> The older people in any hobby must be willing to share and accept people with very few hurdles, otherwise the hobby dies out uh, like stamp collecting. Yeah, I, I, I think that's, well, stamp collecting didn't die off because people were mean. I think it just died off because people were like, oh, the internet. <laughs> Evan Hartman, thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. 
All right, let's see if we can do this really quick. WSJTX. How old is going to be WSJTX on this thing? It might be too old. Now we're really going <laughs> to... Uh, that's weird. Ah, yes. All right, here we go. Elecraft, KX2. I don't even know what column port it thinks it's on. We are at 9600, 82. Perhaps not. Perhaps not. doesn't like that all right let's try five I didn't like that either I have to move my beer out of, this, out of the way for a second I don't know what ports this is on let's see what it says Okay, we got three, four, five. Ten. Oh, it was ten. Okay. Ten. Or TX and stuff. Um, only the tiny whoops. I played around with the tiny whoops for a little while. All right, we've got the wrong. I don't remember what the baud rate is on the KX2. Yay, 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 yay. What is the baud rate on the KX2? Oh, that was it. Okay, we figured it out. Okay, we're good. All right, here we go. Uh, it would be great. Oh, you're not transmitting. Okay, good. So next step is let's figure out the audio. <laughs> Where's my waterfall? Holy smokes, there's stuff there. All right, let me get that in here too. I'm shocked that I got a uh, contact to Japan today. There it is. Something like that. There's stuff in there, looks like it. Let me move the antenna really quick, see if we can improve. Oh, and the noise floor went down, so that's nice. It's likely for those who said that it went down earlier, it's because I was touching it. All right. Lol, always a hello from here in Japan. Hey, how's it going? Josh, have you tried FT8 on six meters or 160 meters? No, I have not. Okay, so we're in fox and hound mode. That's gonna be problematic. Let's get right out of that. Okay, let's see if this is working now. There we go. And that's it, guys. That's all there is to it. FT8, so easy. Uh, let me set my transmit. 
let me tune, tuny tune tune. Uh, this guy's a negative 18. Oh, you know what? Uh, let's go ahead and up the power a little bit. Actually, sorry. Up it if it was at 5, lower if it is at 10. I'm going to drop this down to 8 watts. This thing it runs a little hot even with the even with the heat sink on it and I don't I don't have any desire to overheat a KX2. Um, all right, let's what the heck. Here we go. And one and a two and a transmit. Go. All right. Well, that's doing its thing. What happened? Oh. Oh, don't look at that uh, call sign. That's the wrong call sign. Good thing it was piped out of my, uh... oh, what grid square am I in? Okay, now I need that too. Jesus, that's right, I'm in Prescott. do this a different way. First, let me change that. We're not transmitting. Let's go back to the web here and figure out what my grid square is. Um, Uh, Gary Winter says, try a Peltier cell on a heatsink. That's not a bad idea. I spent all this time to make this work, and then we're just going to wrap this up and we're going to go to the after chat. So if you want to, uh, if you want to try and make uh, contact with me, you may have to join the after chat. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay. Gosh. DM34SK. Okay, we are one step away. Make sure that we are using the USB audio device. All right, there we go. We good. And away she goes. So let's see who can hear me. Mike Smith, this week I passed Tech and General. Thank you for your help, Josh. Um, G0RFD. Congratulations. EM11AD here. What's up? KJ7ISU. How's it going? Join Discord and you can have a dozen or more Elmers. <laughs> yeah, right on. Um, so, yeah. 
No, I... I better not have been sending it through. It should have gone through... That's good. It's going out the right way now. I think I need another cable for the radio. I have the one for cat control, but I'm guessing I need one for audio. Yes. So it, it depends on your radio. If you have a 7300, that'll go out strictly on um, the USB. The single USB cable will do all of it. So you don't have to necessarily um, deal with any of that. Yeah, if you, if you can't hear my FT8, I have it correct. The last time I pulled this laptop out to do FT8, it, what? Are you kidding me? That, okay, <laughs> sure, sure, right, why not? Um, negative 16, negative 16, negative 21, I don't believe this, look at this. Get on this hype, chain, hype train that is my FT8 from eight watts from my KX2 out of a AX1 antenna. Woo, from a southern, by the way, j just looking at this map, where do you think my window points um, out of the hotel? If you guess south, you were correct. <laughs> that is crazy. All right, can't be mad about that. And we got a contact, who is it? KJ7ITX. You got you. A, I got you in a negative eight. Let's see what my uh, receive is. Or oh, here we go. There we go. I'm very excited to see this. Oh no! <laughs> no reply. <laughs> no reply. You're good on audio, but it did come through for a couple of... T yeah, yeah. Hopefully I got that taken care of. Sorry about that. I just passed tech. Yep, got that. Equals question mark, question mark, call. No, I got my call in now. You're good. Thanks, Josh. Got to go. Take it easy. Yep, nope. Oh, okay. We're trying again. It looks like they bumped power or maybe turned their antenna. No way, Sean Bale says, getting me at a negative. So, Prescott, again, being the radio location it is, we're technically on, I guess, the other side of the Rockies or at the end of the Rockies because we're by the Grand Canyon. I feel like here I get a better access kind of all around uh, radio-wise than when I'm back home because I'm kind of like deep in a valley. So... Tomorrow, when I go do the soda activation, it's probably going to be one of your better opportunities to catch me on the air if you're interested in that, which will likely be single sideband. I may drag out my iPad and just work FT8 when I'm out there, but I don't know. Hey, there it is. We got the call. Uh, KI7, uh, sorry, what is that? KJ? Yeah, KJ7TIX. Um, hmm. And yeah, we need to stop that for a second. Okay, we're gonna do one more and then we're gonna wrap it up and we're gonna go over to the Discord. Thank you all for hanging out with me. 
on my on my travel day. Uh, by the way, all the patrons, I, I apologize for the timing of all this. The patrons pick next week is going to be specifically on configuring a Raspberry Pi. And this was voted by them. So if you have any complaints, go talk to them. But this is going to be fun regardless. Um, we're going to be doing digital modify or we're going to be setting up digital modes for a Raspberry Pi. And somebody said my signal fell off. <laughs> Radio dude. Well, if you like this one, you'll like all the other ones even more because this is very, very loose. <laughs> this is not my normal buttoned in live stream. But ideally, I'm going to go through JSA call, uh, WS WSJTX, and WinLink. I feel like those are the three primary digital modes that you should have. Uh, can you move your TX 100 hertz? Sure, up or down? Do you have a direction? Okay, I'm gonna slide up. I'm gonna slide on up. I'll, I'll do you one better. I'll go to, what is that, 16? Yeah, 16. I love it when I right click and I just nail it right on it. There we go. But again, thank you everybody for watching. I appreciate it. Um, let's try and make this contact and I'm, I'm looking at the chat room while we work here, so. Um, keep the questions coming. Jacob Hunter says, just past my tech, was digging around for your general study guide. Wish me luck. Good luck. General's uh, fun. I feel like general is like the, um, it, it, it's really looking into the HF world and, and kind of the some of the advanced stuff in, in amateur radio. So general is kind of where the fun really started for me. Uh, Gary, 7-3, Josh, Kevin, KB9, monitors on local 2 meters and 40 meters while well, compiling videos. <laughs> right on. Oh, man, Jerome. I'm really excited for tomorrow. Like, I'm really excited. I'm going to sleep really well tonight, and I'm going to get up, and I'm going to go try and smash. It. One, definitely, we'll be hitting one summit. But these things are so close together that I might be able to do two. Hmm. We might not be able to make the dream of another contact happen. Oh my gosh, look at this. I, shocking. I, I'm always shocked at like how well some of the radios will do here, um, just in really compromised situations, like right now. Let's see, let's look at one of the most recent ones. Two minutes. Negative 14. It looks like the last time I really got heard was eight minutes ago. So maybe something happened. Regardless. Everybody's so faint. <laughs> it's bad. It's bad. Hey, James from Cheyenne. What's up? Have you at an... Oh, somebody's got me at a negative 13 to negative 19. Oh, video's getting wonky. All right, well then I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up. Um, I'm gonna let this rock in the background while I do my wrappy up thingy here. Uh, need to. There we go. Can't hear you in southeastern Virginia. Oh man. Okay, want to give a big shout out. Again, patrons, I apologize for the timing on this. Patron picks will be next week, so we'll make up for it. And um, I'm, I'm putting together the newsletter, so I'm going to get it out at a reasonable time this uh, this month. I apologize for the last two months because everybody's been sick in my house. I was sick twice in the last two months. My gosh, it's been crazy. Are comments censored if they aren't pro FT8? <laughs> no, uh, they shouldn't be. But um, by the way, guys, if you're if you're typing in the chat, most of your comments, if it has a lot of curse words or if it has links or anything like that, YouTube automatically does work on them. I don't touch most of the comments. Our admins don't do any modification for most of the stuff. It just gets taken out by YouTube proper. So that's kind of out of my control. Anyway, big thank you to Jason Brown 
Jason Siebert, David Dansrow, Danny Miller, Wesley Magyar, Barbara Schrock, Evan Hartman, Mark Fields, Brad Snyder, Dennis Dunderdale, Garrett Larson, 86DM Dennis, the Wyoming Ham, who I saw on the Twitch, but I don't know if I saw him in here. Uh, Randall Hinsley, Dennis Mickelson, Michael Hunt, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, Ken Hall, Sean Bales, KG7ITX, Ur Dragetchevich, Rob Zarges, got it, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, Rob K8BCR, Lee Harrell, Michael Kearney, Steve Barker, Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadow, Stephen Hunt, Connor Carroll, Mike Marusin, Mike Hearley, Harald, Harald Carpenter, the Brew Crew, I did actually, this was a, an appreciable amount of beer, 32 ounces. Appreciate that. Um, the Earthly Gamer asked, I was curious about the patron's pick. So the producer level patrons on my Patreon, the first stream normally of every month, they pick the topic. And I do it via poll. The choice that gets the most votes is what I do the stream on. So they wanted to talk more about Raspberry Pis, so we're going to do that. Uh, Stephen Hunter, Justin Rao, Stephen Carduz, Richard Smith, Hercules KC1LZR, John Flowers, Stephen Blanford, Mike uh, Tom Wright, Bill McCarty, Good Game Ham Radio. I hope uh, I got to check in with your contest. David Durall, uh, David Durald, uh, Simon. Simon, oh, that's right. Simon Deards, Nicholas Dubay, Michael Iafredo, KD9OOF. I'm looking for your support on the Hamvention meetup. Jace Ravenfield, Masi Madi, Daniel Sullivan, Michael Hunt, Jason Legg, Jonathan Williams, Andy Crowley, and Don Riley. Guys and ladies, if there are some watching, we're heading on over to the Discord for the after chat. I super appreciate you. Oh, there's my logos are on. That just doesn't make any sense. Get rid of that right now. That's bothering me. Uh, we're going to hop over to the Discord right now. I appreciate you sticking with me for this on travel um, stream that I did. I will also be streaming on Twitch following this after a little bit of a reset, but for right now, I'm closing this one down. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Consider hitting the subscribe button, and I'll talk to you later. See ya.